Okay, I'm going to work now a, an example of a hard or level three problem in a DC superposition. So this is the circuit. In this case, we actually have three sources we have to deal with, all of which happen to be current sources in this case. So as always, I start out by killing sources and I need to deactivate, in this case, two of the sources because remember that I want to leave only one source active at a time. If I have two sources active, I would be double counting the effects of each source. So I'm gonna remove the five amp source by changing that to an open circuit, in other words, a zero amp current source. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the seven amp source. And you may notice that that's gonna leave the four ohm resistor dangling, which is not connected, therefore it cannot carry any current. I'm done with that. Now I go into the simplify circuit mode. And the first thing I'm going to do is just to remove the dangling element. So I just click on that and press the delete key. Anytime something is shorted or dangling, that's all you have to do. Now I have two resistors here that are in series carrying the same current. So I can combine those very easily. So the seven plus nine will be 16. And I'll change that to a short. And that's correct. And I could quit at this point since that's a current divider, so I think I will. And now we have a single node pair, one node here and the other node there. So we'll do a single node pair analysis on that as a current divider. And notice now that this is labeled I0 prime because it's only part of the I0 that was due to all three of those current sources acting at the same time. So this is the partial value of I0. So I0 prime. I'll use a current divider formula. Um, you can use any of these three terms. I personally like to use this one. Of course, you can even put in a numerical answer if you want to do that. Uh, but I'm just going to do it this way for simplicity. So I'm going to have a one amp source here. And then I need to put in the other resistor, not the 16 ohm, but the other one in the numerator. So that's going to be a six ohm. And then six here. And then 16 resistor of interest goes there. And then I need to also check the P word, the polarity. So in this case, this current is gonna go up here and then in the same direction as I naught going back there and also through the six ohm. And therefore I'm gonna have a plus sign in the polarity. So that will be correct. So that's the only equation I need here. And now I simply enter a numerical value carrying out that arithmetic. I get that that's 0.273 amps and that is correct. So now I've analyzed um, the value of I0 here due to the one amp source. Now I need to kill sources again and consider the effects of each of the other sources in turn. So I'm gonna first go in and now get rid of the one amp source since I've already analyzed that. So I'm going to delete that. Remember that I also have to get rid of one of these others. So let's get rid of the seven amp this time. And that'll, you know, I'm done. Now you might notice the four ohm resistor is actually redundant to the five amp source because it's not gonna have any other effect on the circuit, but nonetheless, we can go into the circuit editor. And now, um, since we do have these resistors in series with the same current, we can add those resistances. So that's gonna be the 15 ohms. Change that to a short. And that's correct. And now in order to combine these and make it into a single loop circuit, um, I'm going to convert this SOT current into a SOT voltage because the SOT current prevents me from combining these two resistors in parallel. So I'm going to right click on that element. I actually have to click it twice. And I'm going to um, add a voltage uh, label to it. And I want to have actually passive sign conventions. I'm going to put the plus sign on the top. And then I'm going to give it a name V naught since I haven't used that name before. And then I'm gonna right click again and remove now the SOT current by changing the current arrow and polarity to none. And it's gonna tell me that I now need to write an equation for I naught double prime before I remove it. So here I write that equation. It's gonna be a very simple Ohm law equation as these always are. So it's gonna be the V naught double prime divided by the resistance in question, which is the 15 ohms. So I check that, that is correct. And so I'm done there. And now I can combine these two resistors in parallel. 
because they have the same voltage. And so the product over the sum will give me in that case 4.77 ohms. And then I delete this resistor. And check that combination, that is now correct. And now because this is a single loop circuit, I basically can quit at this point. There wouldn't really be much advantage in combining these two resistors since I can already get this voltage using Ohm's law. So I'm done editing and I will do a single loop analysis and then calculate my sought uh, branch voltage. And as I said, that's going to be a very simple equation. That's just going to be the five amps by Ohm's law multiplying the 4.777 ohms. Then I always have to check my polarity and the current is in fact going to the positive side of that voltage, which means I am using passive sign convention. Therefore, I have a plus sign here and that is correct. And then I simply need to do the numerical calculations of these quantities for which I have the equations now, just plugging these things in. And that will give me, uh, sorry, for these two equations rather. And uh, just working that out, that's going to give me these values. And that is correct. And now it's recorded the value of I0 double prime due to the 5 amp source. And now I need to analyze the third source. So I go again to kill sources. And since I've already considered the 1 amp and the 5 amp, those are the two that I want to kill this time. And so I'm left with this circuit and I'm done. And now again, I want to simplify that as usual. And now I have the 7 and the 9 ohm in series. So I'll combine those to get the 16 ohms and change this one to a short. And again, remember you always have to check before you start combining something else, um, otherwise it won't let you proceed. And now those two are in parallel. So once again, I cannot combine them because this one has a SOT current, which would be lost if I combine these two in parallel. So therefore I'm going to have to change that to a SOT voltage. So I'm going to add a voltage label there. In this case, I want to put the plus sign on the top to again use passive sign convention. So that's going to be my V naught triple prime here. And then I'm going to right click and remove the current arrow by selecting that to be none. And as usual, it'll ask me to write an auxiliary equation for that. So I trip I naught triple prime equals, I'll fill that in as V naught triple prime divided by the resistance in question, which is now 16 ohms. Check that, and that is correct. So I'm done there. And those equations are recorded up here for reference. Um, now, because these are in parallel and they have the same voltage, I can simply do the math and take the product over the sum there and get 4.36 ohms. Delete that one and check that combination. And that's really as far as I need to go because this is now a single loop circuit and I can readily compute B0 triple prime um, from this. So I'm done with the editing and I'll select single loop analysis. And again, I just need a SOT branch voltage here. So my V0 triple prime equals to the product of a current and a voltage. In this case, it's going to be seven amps multiplied by 4.36 ohms. And I again have to check the P word, the polarity Notice now that the current is actually going into the negative side of the voltage, which means this is now active sign convention. That means that Ohm's law has a minus sign. So I need to put a minus sign there to be correct. And then that's accepted. And finally, I just need to go in and put in a numerical value for those two quantities, which I can compute very easily. And that's going to be uh, those values, negative 30.5 volts and negative 1.91 amps. And so now the values of I0 due to each of those three sources are recorded here for reference. And now I just need to apply the superposition principle, which basically means to add those three values and put them here. And that turns out to be something close to zero, actually, negative uh, 0.05 roughly amps. So I'll check that. And that is correct. And as always, I can get a detailed view here. Now notice at any time in the problem, had I been unable to figure out what to do, I could have uh, used my option to give up and that would have shown me a full solution of the problem. 
And it would not have penalized my grade in any way for doing that. Um, you simply have to work another problem then. Um, and so there's uh, no harm in doing that. So here's the fully worked solution. And again, you can scroll through that if you had any questions about how to um, handle different situations. But since I've already done it successfully, then that shouldn't be too much of a problem.